Good morning, beautiful humans, and welcome to Auntie's Adventure Assortment. I have just received a dream permission, my very first private property permission, and it is a church that has grounds of approximately 20 acres. It's going to take me a long time to get this thoroughly hunted. I am absolutely stoked about it. It's a fairly modern church, but it's built on what I believe used to be farmland. So who knows what's hiding under the ground? Let's go find out together. I'll get in touch with you at the first plug. So here's a look at the areas that haven't been developed. There's a pond down there, right there. I guess it's for stormwater management. There's a little, a little bridge going across to the to the wooded area. This is all undeveloped. And then there's a big parking lot. So obviously anything around the parking lot has been graded. There'll be nothing but modern stuff there. But in the wooded areas, there might be something really interesting. I'm not going to show too much because I don't want to disclose the location. Anyway. Lots to do. I'll see you at the first beep. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you the new assembly I've put together for earphones. I've been using the earphones that came, that I purchased with the detector, They're the old 1970s style cans. And my goodness, this curly cord is not very long. And it really irritates me to be tethered that closely to the detector. So what I've done is I have a nifty pair of lime green earbuds and I bought a six foot extender cord and hubby had a nifty little converter. So I'm going to try that and see if it gives me a little more leeway. I'll let you know how it works. True to form, my first plug contains a rusty nail. I don't think I'll film any more junk. Let's just see. I've decided to uh, to pick some low-hanging fruit, uh, just doing shallow shallow digging around the uh, the parking islands. Here's the first bull tab. It rang in at a solid 36 on the Fisher F44. Here's my first coin. It's a super crusty penny. I have no idea what it is, what the date is. Can't even tell which side is which. I'll try and clean it better when I get home. But I'm on board with a coin. I said I wouldn't film any more junk. Here, here's another uh, pull tab. It was down about three inches. And in the plug with it was this tiny snail shell. I'm not sure if it's fossilized or not. Let me check. No, it's just a little shell. So what that tells me is, this used to be a lake bottom. And we know that to be true. So that's a pretty old shell. And a fairly new pull tab. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. It's a 2016 dollar coin. And it was just under the grass. It was a big, bouncy cuckoo overload signal. You might say it was a really loony signal. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, it's a laugh a minute here at Andy's Adventure Assortment. Okay, I feel a little bit energized having found a dollar coin. I'm going to continue. Here's something a little different. It appears to be the lid off a bottle of makeup. And inside, I found a couple of shards of broken glass. So I think the whole bottle was down there. Penny Queen strikes again. I think this was in 1974. In remarkably good shape for something that's over 40 years old. I'm still calling the Canadian copper pennies. If it's 64 on my Fisher F44, then that's pretty much what it is.
Oh dear, here's a surface find. I'll remove that. I'm sure the church folks don't really want beer caps in their yard. I'm not sure what this is. It rang up like foil, bouncing between 20 and 26. It doesn't appear to be ferrous, so I'm not sure. Artifact. So what do you think this is? It was only down about two inches. It looks like the base of a light bulb. It has that lovely green color that copper goes. But if it's only two inches down, surely it wouldn't be that lovely patina. Hmm, interesting. Well, here's a pleasant little surface find. It's a Canadian dime. A little rust mark on it. Ooh, a big rust mark on it. Yikes. I'm not sure I'll get a date off that. Let me show you what this sounds like, though. Isn't that a mess? Welcome to Canadian Coins. Yuck. And not a foot away, looking equally hideous and sounding equally yucky is its brother. <laughs> Well, I guess that was a bit of a spill, and I'm 20 cents richer than I was. It looks as though I got a piece of a motherboard. Are these like little capacitors or something on them? It rang up very strangely, I can assure you. This sounded just like a, a pull tab. I thought that was what I was hunting. It's a 1989 Looney Dollar. Huh. All right. I'm going to drop it on the ground and show you what it sounds like. It sounds better out of the ground than it did in. That iron grunt, though, it's... Yeah, beep, beep, beep. That sounds like anywhere between copper and silver. Six, there's, a grunt. there's a hint of uh, aluminum, 51. Yeah. Welcome to Canadian coins, as I said before. Anyway, I'm glad to have another loony. This is why I dig pull tabs. Look at this number. 46. That's what pull tabs have generally been ringing in for me. And it's a zinc penny. It's in pretty nasty condition, so I guess it's no treasure, but <laughs> you just have to dig these things. I don't think this carabiner is going to be holding anything anymore. That was an overload signal. It was just under the grass. I can't even tell what this is. It looks like a coin. It's thicker than a penny. It's ferrous. I have no idea what this is. It's pretty chewed up. I think I'll have to put this in the electrolysis and see what, if anything, comes out. I haven't the faintest idea what this is. I dug this just to verify that it was indeed a pull tab because it's ringing up like one. 32, 33, 34, 33, 34, 35. But it isn't a pull tab. I think it's some kind of pin. I'm going to brush it off and see what I find. Well, it was pretty once. Uh, there was one little fake pearl in there, which when I brushed it with a toothbrush went flying 
and there's no chance of me finding it. The numbers suggest gold, but it doesn't look gold to me. I'll clean it up at home and see if I can find any more information. Over here by the edge of the sidewalk, I found a really pretty button. It still has the shank on it. I bet somebody was miffed when they realized that that was gone from their coat. Here's a clad quarter. I think it's a 2006. The caribou has a big rust spot on his antler. Poor fellow. But the queen is doing much worse. No wonder this gave me an odd signal. I think it's a U.S. Memorial Zinc Penny. Do you see the memorial there? A present from our southern neighbors. This nail rang up far better than it deserved to because it's bent. Here's another piece of that motherboard, which wouldn't be unusual, except this is almost half a block away from where I found the other piece. So either it came in with a fill or it got slung by the mower or something. I got a wire ring. I thought it was an earring at first, but I don't see any opening. That's a mystery. I kind of think this is a nickel. Is that the beaver crouching there? But oh my goodness, is it ever in rough shape. Wow. I do believe that is the beaver on his log, though. This was down a ways, about six inches, and I think it's just a zinc penny. Boy, these are nasty. They're crusty. This church must really fertilize its lawns. I'm not sure what this is. Is it the end of... I don't know, is it the end of a little flashlight? It's quite substantial. I will ask someone. If you can think of anything, please let me know. You must be getting used to me saying I have no idea what this is. It almost looks like a little bead, but is it a rolled up piece of aluminum? I don't know, it's tiny. I got a tiny piece of cobalt glass and uh, whatever that is. Looks like part of a buckle. Here's another clad quarter. It's one of the uh, Jubilee quarters from 2002. Still sounds like junk, mostly iron with the tiniest little chirp that goes along with it. If I weren't a baby detectorist still and digging almost everything that beeps, I wouldn't be finding these coins. Oh, I'm 25 cents to the good now. Trusty old thing, though. Well, it's another pesky zinc penny. And the tiny end of a screw that I eyeballed. This was a really mixed signal, and now I understand why, because I believe this is lead. It's super heavy but there's this iron hook on it. So I, I, is this a tire weight? I don't know, help me out. I wouldn't have expected to find the top of a hanger under a pine tree by the pond, but there it is. Hello again, beautiful humans, and welcome to the wrap-up for my first hunt at the church, first of many. Uh, here are the junky finds, uh, some surface trash, scraps of balloons, lots of those, a piece of raffia, 
I found lots of these little berries. Those are from the uh, the Christmas planters uh, wrapper bottle cap uh, a label. I believe this says I packed a shoebox for for a Samaritan's purse. A funky little palm tree with eyeballs. Kind of random, and a. Volkswagen car that says, I think it's eat dust. <laughs> Underground, I found lots of uh, can slaw and foil. Foil rings up so nicely. Pull tabs, piece of a pen. I think this is the end of a pencil where the eraser goes. It's pretty mashed. Two Corona beer caps. Shame, shame. That must be from some visitors making use of the parking lot in off hours. A couple of bobby pins. Random piece of plastic. No idea what that is. And lots of rusty nails, screws, wire. Random lump of iron. I'm delighted to say that my Fisher F44 finds tiny wires like that down about four inches at least, so it's pretty sensitive. Anyway, there's the junk. It's all going in the rubbish. Some slightly more identifiable junk. Top of a hanger. Two pieces of a memory card or circuit board of some sort. Carabiner. Part of a buckle, I guess. This is the top of the makeup bottle. N2 Classic Ivory, Ivoire Classique, and a few scraps of the glass bottle that was in it. I didn't find the rest of the bottle, so I just don't know what that story is. My little piece of cobalt blue glass. I love that color. Oh my goodness, that's one of my favorite colors in the world. <clears throat> this thing I discovered from checking it out with my loop is the end of a, a nicotine vaporizer. It says smock or smoke, 0.15 ohms, I guess that is. 30 to 70 watts, best at 45 to 60 watts. And the, the logo on it, I believe is V8, and it's surrounded with flames, and then it says Baby X4. So that's probably more than you need to know about a vape machine. Anyway, I was quite astonished by how non-plasticky that is. That's a serious piece of equipment right there. Gigantic lump of iron. This is, I think this is older than, than the fill that went in that, uh, that area. That must have been dredged up with when they did the grading. No idea what that is. Tiny lump of aluminum, that's that thing that looks like a little bead. No idea. An aluminum tube, which is not cut, it's smooth on the ends. And this, I, I don't know, I thought it was a piece of, um, you know, like the stake that stop signs are put on, but no, I'm sure it isn't because it's got an electrical connection. So, absolutely no idea. And it looks like it was given a lordly whack with the lawnmower, too. Who knows? If you can help me out with... Oh, and this wonder. I have no idea what this is. This metal dome. And there's a rubbery thing here. And some kind of a connection. I am completely at a loss. Help me out with that. Looks like a bowler hat. I could use that for a craft. All right, enough foolishness. Over to the, uh, shall I say, better finds. They're all pretty scrappy. This is delightful. This tiny, come on, focus. This tiny little snail. How lovely that is. Tiny, perfect snail. 
This is a silver plated copper ring. There's no opening on it, so it's not an earring, but it might be off an earring or a necklace. This little pin had little pearls, I say in quotes, around the edge. The pin broke off when I washed it. So that was here. Oh, it's hard to manipulate with one hand. That was here like this. It's just some kind of pot metal that's been plated. It literally broke apart as I tried to clean it. The funky daisy button, which again is some kind of pot metal. That was very pretty once. This pleases me just because it's got that wonderful old copper patina to it. It's the end of a light bulb. Come on, focus. Focus. It's not going to focus. It says, I don't want to play. There. I, I just love that color that old copper goes. And that seems older than the average light bulb end that you find nowadays. And it was down only about two inches. So again, did it come in with the fill or is that a dredge up from the old, the old use of the land when they graded it for the new use of the land? Who knows? That, I really like that though. It's, it's quite hefty. Light bulbs now have the chintziest thin ends on them. This is from a time when materials were not as expensive as they are now and things were made much more substantially. Hmm. What else do we have? Oh, this, this mystery item here, which I wonder if it's a tire weight. You, you gearhead guys are probably going to be laughing at me. It might be something completely different. It says FND20. This bottom piece for sure is lead. It's super heavy. And it's got that iron hook on it, which is corroding. Let me know what you think that is. And then to the coins. Oh my goodness, this uh, these lawns are nasty on the coins. Um, whether there's a lot of fertilizer going down on the lawns or whether they're just always wet, I don't know. Anyhow, I got five nasty zinc pennies. Dateless, dateless, dateless. U.S. Memorial Zinc, dateless. This is a 2006. It looks about a thousand years old, doesn't it? And an... 1974 copper penny that looks absolutely dandy. If I can get it to focus. Come on. Close. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. Look at that. That's the second portrait of Queen Elizabeth the second. So there's a 1974 copper penny. And here is a 2006 zinc penny. <laughs> Need I say more? All right, now. Here's a 2003 nickel. which is refusing to focus. Come on. There. You can just see the beaver on his log. You can see the CAN of Canada and Oath 2003 there. What a mess. Yikes. You can't even see the queen. And this thing looks nickelish, although it's thicker. 
but I wondered if that might be corrosion, but you know, now that I'm feeling it, the weight is wrong. So this is some kind of mystery coin. I think it's a coin. Some kind of steel coin. I, I don't know why I say it's a coin, but... I think this is going to have to go through the electrolysis and we'll uh, see if we can find any kind of hint. I got two dimes. There's a 2008 and a 2016. I recall in the field I turned this over and said, oh, it's got a little rust spot on it. And then I turned it over. It's like, oh, it's got a big rust spot on it. Two quarters, 2002, and the poor queen has a big zit on her face, thanks to rust. And the caribou is worse off. And a 2006, and the caribou has a growth on his horn, and the queen is way worse off. These coins are so disrespectful. They're just... Come on, governments. You, you, you're just using the cheapest of materials now for your coins, and it's just a crying shame because old coins, they, they remain so beautiful and so substantial. And yet the new ones are, are just ghastly. Okay, enough crying. I got two loonies. Two... Canadian dollar coins. Yes, there we go. A 1989 on the left and a 2016 on the right. And they both appear to be in about the same condition. So whatever the, the loonies are made of, and I think there's a fairly high content of nickel in them, they survive way better. Although these were not deep under the ground. I didn't really dig these. They were just under the grass. So they didn't have all the influences that some of the others did. And a few years of water and fertilizer. So those still look spendable. Anyway, there you have it, my friends. A whopping $2.86. Some of it really isn't spendable. Those think pennies. I'd, I'd get filthy looks if I tried to redeem those. And some costume jewelry. A button. Honestly, I think the find of the day is this dear little snail. I wonder how many hundreds or thousands of years that has been lying there just waiting for me to find it. Perfect little snail shell. All right, my lambs, thanks for joining me here on Auntie's Adventure Assortment. I'll be going back to that church from time to time. There's plenty more ground to cover. But in the meantime, here's Auntie waving goodbye. See you soon.